good morning, good evening, or good night. Um, I think that's all. Oh, or good afternoon. <laughs> um, so basically my voice is going to be a little bit lower and ra more raspy than usual because I woke up recently and I don't have any water to drink and I don't want to go upstairs because then I'll be disturbing everybody else and they'll know I'm awake and then they'll come bother me. Um, so that's the deal. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind. I don't think you really should, but yeah, uh, there's a little note before we get started. So you don't really use your quirk that much in this story, but your quirk is see no evil, which is good for, like, it's really good for close combat, but you need to touch your opponent or they have to touch you to activate your quirk and your quirk will turn them blind for eight minutes. So yeah. Uh, also this is in first person, so I'm sorry if you don't like that. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you don't like it though. But I feel like it's pretty similar anyways. Alright, let's get started on Dragon Zone. Flames. I see raging flames surrounding the building near me. I can't breathe. There's so much smoke. I was just in front of the USJ entrance. How did I get all the way into this disaster zone? Am I all alone? In a panic state, I jolt up and start sprinting to find someone. Where are the others? Are they okay? What if something bad happened to them? What if they get hurt? What if I get hurt? What if I never see Ojiro again? I haven't confessed to him. I take a small breath, trying not to inhale too much smoke. I can't let my emotions get the better of me, and so I try to stay calm. Aizawa-sensei was calm when the villains all appeared. At least he looked calm on the outside, so I must be too. To be a great hero, you must always be level-minded. Where are you running to, runt? I hear a raspy voice, and I'm suddenly surrounded by a tornado of flames. Boss said we could have some fun with you hero wannabes, so be my playmate, he says with a devilish grin across his face. He takes his hand and gently caresses my face. Looking right into his eyes, I grin. He gave me a confused look before all of his sight left him. He starts frantically punching the air in front of him furiously. I've made a distance between us, enough so that way I could still see his reaction for the first minute of being blind. But now I must hurry, I only have seven minutes before he gains his vision back. I want to tie him to us, that way he won't be able to harm anybody else, but I have no rope around. I have to think quick. I could render him immobile. I did take self-defense lessons when I was younger, thanks to my old man being such a worrywart. I'll have to knock him out. Quickly, I made use of my skills, and he's on the ground. Listener 1, Villain 0. <laughs> I snickered. I hear footsteps approaching me, at least three or four people, so I have no time to rest. Quickly, I start running. I look back to see how far they are. I noticed a familiar monkey-looking boy that I so deeply admired. He was slapping his tail against the ground, giving him air and thrusting him forward. He attacks one of the villains as he heads my way, knocking the villain unconscious. As quick as I could blink, Ojiro was near me, and I was also in the air within a second, being thrusted by the tail of Ojiro. I became flustered thinking about Ojiro, swiftly taking out the villain and moving on and always thinking ahead. He's going to be an amazing hero. A dust of pink crosses my cheeks. I must snap out of this. This is no time to be flustered. The villains have attacked and I must be of use. I look back to assess the situation behind us. Four villains in the pursuit of us. There's four of them. I say, Damn it, I've been going for a while now and I can't seem to find the way out. I must be going in circles. I need to stop and gather my thoughts. Ojiro quickly says as he turns a corner and sets me down, which made me realize he had his hands wrapped around my waist that entire time. I became flustered and twiddled my thumbs as Ojiro sat there thinking. I start to walk away from him and check around the corner to see the villain's position. There was a small noise that came out of me as I felt something wrapped around my waist forcefully pulling me back. Listener, don't go walking off. Don't leave my side. Ojiro says with an almost yell but still trying to whisper. As he pulls me close to him by his tail wrapped around my waist. As I am right next to him, he looks over and presses his forehead against mine. All this happens as I hang there in the air. My crush's tail wraps so gently around me, and a thick red plastered across my face. Uh, okay, ojiro gun. I stuttered. I looked at Ojiro so intently as, as he is trying to figure out what to do next. Would now be a good time to tell him? Um, ojiro gun, I have something to tell you, I finally said. What is it, listener? He says while keeping his eyes on the corner nearby to make sure no one will approach them. Um, I've gotten to know you well, well and to be honest, this isn't easy, but I don't want to ruin the friendship we have. I enjoy training and studying with you. It makes me really happy. You make me happy. I, I like, the next thing you knew, you blacked out. Time skip. 
What's that annoying beeping noise? I barely get to open my eyes to see white. Ugh, I uttered while trying to move. My head hurt. I slowly feel, feel my hand around my head till it reaches the back to touch a huge knot with bandages on it. What happened? I say in disgust. At that moment, I realized a figure next to me. Ojiro-kun? His head was laying on the bed. How long had he been here? I reached my hand out to touch his hair and hesitate for a second as soon as my hand almost was almost on his head. Listen, uh, Ojiro mumbles. Uh, sorry, I say sitting straight up, scared he was angry that I was going to touch his head. He didn't move. Oh, was he talking in his sleep? But why my name? I decide not to get my hopes up. Listener, he mumbles. I look over to see his cute face laying there asleep, only to realize he was actually awake this time. His eyes wide, a single tear trying not to fall from his eyes. I was so worried, he whimpers. Thank you for staying here with me, I say, sm softly smiling at him, finally taking my hand and patting his head. He takes his hand and gently caresses my cheek. He pulls me towards him and softly pushes his lips against mine. I sit there, pink dusted across my cheeks. He pulls back and looks at me. I was so worried I was going to lose you, Ojira said as he put his forehead to yours. I love you, listener. Please don't leave my side. He embraces me in a tight hug as I see his tail sway back and forth at a quick pace, letting me know he is happy. I'm happy. Please don't leave my side either, Ojiro-kun. Congratulations, you made it to the end. Again, I want to apologize for my disgusting voice today. Um, whenever I wake up in the morning, it just sounds ugh, you know. Uh, so this is the last request that I had, so if you want to request a specific character or a fanfic in the comments, like, feel free, I will be getting to that. I might do a personal video or, like, one that I wanted to do, uh, but I will definitely get to it within, like, a day or two. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye